It's not a tumor. What has that got to do with it? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! What's going on, all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Going forward in my director projects, I'm going to try to do two movie reviews in the same video. So continuing on in my series of Ivan Reitman reviews, today I'll be reviewing the next two movies I got on this director project. First off, 1997's Father's Day, followed by 1998's Six Days, Seven Nights. Hope you enjoy the video. Smart Alec lawyer Jack Lawrence is one day visited by an ex-girlfriend who tells him her child is his. Enter Dale Putley, a depressed goofball who is also a writer who also meets with the same ex-girlfriend who also tells him her child is his. One day, Jack and Dale meet and discover they've been told the same story, and there is now a question of who the real father is. They learn their son is following a rock band, so Jack and Dale must use their teamwork to find him, and then find out which one of them is the real father. Father's Day was released in 1997, and this film was a critical and financial failure, come to find out. The film currently has a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the film only grossed $35 million worldwide under an $80 million budget. Ouch, that's pretty bad. This movie does not have the best reception among Ivan Reitman's filmography, and it is a film that I actually have not even heard of until compiling the list of movies to watch for this director project. So, I didn't know much about this movie going in. All I knew about Father's Day is that Robin Williams and Billy Crystal are in it. Both actors are genuinely funny actors. I was excited to see the prospect of these two comedic legends together. And, I gotta be honest, I was not disappointed with this movie. I guess this is a hot take, considering the reception this film has. I thought the film was actually pretty enjoyable. Now, is this Ivan Reitman's best movie by any means? No. But considering the last film I covered in this director project was Junior, which was garbage, Father's Day, I thought, was a step in the right direction. I think what makes this film work one is the pairing of Robin Williams and Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal plays more of a hot shot, cynical person who's like jaded at everything. Robin Williams has kind of a similar, is in a similar position, but he's still the goofball, lovable personality, even though he's in a depressed spot in his life. So you actually see these two come together, being told that, you know, they might be the father of this child that they did not know about from the past ex-girlfriend that both characters had a brief relationship with at one point and they're tasked to help find him as he's run off and uh i actually i think the strength of this movie is the pairing of the two actors because i think they were awesome together of course, Robin Williams is the standout, of course, because, you know, it's Robin Williams. He does his improv comedy, his impressions, the goofball charm that made me love the actor so much. But Billy Crystal, I mean, he's pretty good in this, too. I like seeing him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Robin Williams, bring his charm to the movie as well. And it was a fun little duo. You got other performances in here as well. Uh, I'd say another hilarious addition was Julia Louise Dreyfus, who plays the current wife. All right, I'm going to get an accident. Oh my God. So right. Julia Louise Dreyfus. This is your friend. The current you're, you're a shower buddy. Yes. Yes. Uh, is no. trying to figure no, we were never out what's actually going again. on. No. The boy and I, I think her yeah, he was so fun. I'm closing him off. And I was just watching. That's all. And whenever the film cuts back to her, it had some pretty good laughs along with the strengths of Robin Williams. And Billy Crystal, because this movie all around is a joy to watch. I think the reason this movie works is, yeah, the premise sounds kind of far-fetched, uh, especially since we don't know who the father of this child actually is. But I think what makes it work is Ivan Reitman does a good job of embracing the silliness of the premise, especially the pairing of the two comedic legends. 
but also telling a heartfelt story out of it. Uh, kind of harkening back to some of Ivan Reitman's previous films, like Kindergarten Cop and Twins, which both had ridiculous premises. But Reitman does a good job of embracing the silliness of it to the point where over time you get invested in the story and you actually feel a little bit of emotional attachment to the characters by the movie's end. That's some of Reitman's best strengths as a director when he was on this earth. And Father's Day is no exception, even though it doesn't hit the heights of those two other films. Going into my negatives, uh, there's a couple things that hold this movie back, even though I overall enjoy the movie. Uh, for one, they have a subplot with uh, Bruce Greenwood, who's in the movie, who is the legal father of the son character. And he tries to look for the son as well. But the film revolves around a lot of slapstick humor regarding his character. I thought the subplot was kind of forced and unnecessary. Uh, his character, I thought, was pretty underwritten, too. And the slapstick around his character, I thought, was painfully unfunny. I don't think that style of humor fit compared with the comedy that you got with Robin Williams and Billy Crystal already being in the same movie. And uh, that those stretches were a bit of a dud, in my opinion. Like, your humor regarding his character involves a porta potty Yeah, that's about as bottom of the barrel as you can get. So, yeah, there's not much about Bruce Greenwood's character, even though he is a good actor. Uh, there is an extended cameo from the band Sugar Ray. I have nothing against Sugar Ray as a band, but... The extension of them being in the movie wore off a bit too thin to the point where it became kind of obnoxious for my liking. It felt like a cheap plug-in to their band. Uh, I think that it was kind of ridiculous seeing the amount of screen time Sugar Ray, the band, ended up in this movie. And I think the other issue I have with this movie is there's a couple of plot points in this film that do feel pretty awkward considering later events that happen to certain actors. For example, we all know what happened to Robin Williams in 2014. He tragically died in 2014 by suicide. And uh, the opening plot point of his character is Robin Williams is a depressed writer. And the opening scene of this movie, his character attempts a suicide. Yeah, that's actually pretty awkward to watch considering recent events that actually happened to the late actor, unfortunately. And it is kind of sad to watch that scene. I guess in 2022, considering what happened to Robin Williams in real life. So that's, uh, that's sadly a stain on the movie that I think is hard to get over, I think, in more recent years. But once the story moves along and you see Robin Williams and Billy Crystal paired together, the film is an absolute joy. I actually did enjoy this movie overall. Not the best movie in the world. I have a couple of issues with it. It's definitely not on par with Ivan Reitman's best work, especially compared to, like, Twins or Dave or, of course, Ghostbusters, which I still think is his best film. But I think Father's Day is better than what his current reputation precedes it. I think this movie works mainly on the strength of the two leads, and I actually got invested in the journey. There was a lot of great humor in the situation where they have to find this boy, and there's a lot of misunderstandings related to that, as the son doesn't know what's going on, and he thinks he's being kidnapped. There's actually some pretty fun stuff related to that and scenarios, and I enjoyed the bond and journey of the characters as the movie goes along couple of good cameos in there I'm not going to spoil. One was genuinely funny uh, near the end. I'm not going to spoil which. I'm going to save that for when you watch the movie. But this is a good movie. I do recommend this one, especially for the strength of Robin Williams and Billy Crystal paired together on this wacky comedic adventure. I think the movie works on that strength alone paired with really good directing from Ivan Reitman once again. I did enjoy this one. At the end of the day, I'll be giving Father's Day a 4 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 72 out of 100. Six Days, Seven Nights from 1998. When Quinn, a grouchy pilot living the good life in the South Pacific, agrees to transfer a savvy fashion editor, Robin, to Tahiti, he ends up stranded on a deserted island with her after their plane crashes. 
The pair avoid each other at first until they're forced to team up to escape from the island and some pirates who want their heads. Six Days, Seven Nights was released in 1998. And unlike Father's Day, this film actually churned a profit when it came out in theaters back then. The reviews for it were mixed, but it actually did draw a crowd, and there are people who have spoken fondly about this movie. I know Dave from Interpreting the Stars recently reviewed the film on his channel and spoke highly of it. And uh, I was actually intrigued to see the movie after seeing his review of the film and the fact that, you know, Ivan Reitman directed this film. I was intrigued to check it out. On the surface, there's a lot of good stuff about this movie. You got Ivan Reitman behind the camera. He was a talented director. You got a pretty good uh, lead actors in the film. You got Harrison Ford and you got Anne Hesch. I gotta say, rest in peace to Anne Hesch, who just sadly passed away recently. Uh, I thought the two were good actors, and I liked seeing the two paired together in this crazy situation being stranded on a deserted island. When there is comedy in the film, it actually does land, uh, especially when you have Harrison Ford and Anne Hesh's characters with two different lifestyles who clash at first. Uh, there is some funny stuff with that. And I like... I think the central setup of the story, a survival story with comedic elements. There's stuff you could do in this movie that, you know, I didn't mind. Like, I, I like the setup. It's got some good cinematography. I did like the score. And there's even a pretty solid supporting cast, too. Like, David Swimmer is even in this film. And there's a couple stuff with him that I thought was pretty funny as well. So what happened? Why am I not that crazy about Six Days, Seven Nights? Uh, why did I feel empty watching this movie? Well, going into the issues I have with this movie, not one did I feel any stakes or danger when watching this movie. When you're watching a survival story, when characters are stuck in a bad predicament, there has to be a sense of urgency. There has to be a sense of danger. Uh, or characters have to figure out what to do in this moment and figure out how to survive. A great example of that is Castaway. Castaway did a good job of showing the passage of time and Tom Hanks being trapped on that island and learning to live off of that land while also figuring out how to escape at the same time. And that is a fantastic movie with an incredible performance. And this movie, like, I just didn't feel the stakes in that. Uh, it's mainly just Harrison Ford and Anne Hesch stuck on an island and bickering at each other until they're forced to put aside those differences. And even the danger that the synopsis I read speaks of with the pirates, uh, there's not really that much with that. The pirates are introduced late in the movie, only in, like, the third act. You only get, like, two scenes with them, and... They're just like a throwaway addition to the movie, and I don't really feel the need that they are in this movie. And not to mention, the film actually wastes talented actors playing these pirates. Like, let me name some of these actors playing these throwaway characters. You have Cliff Curtis, Danny Trejo, and Tamara Morrison. Yes, Boba Fett himself is a pirate in this movie. And he's an awesome actor. I love, the, I love his voice. I love the character roles he's played over the years, you think he'd be awesome, but the movie wastes him like he's nothing, and I take issue with that because I'm a fan of all three actors playing these characters. And I think the worst offender that Six Days, Seven Nights has to offer is the movie ends up pairing Harrison Ford and Anne Hesch, and you're meant to believe that throughout this journey they fall in love. Now, I have nothing against the actors. They play their parts. I like seeing the two on screen together. But not once in this movie could I buy these two characters falling in love with each other. And no, it has nothing to do with the age difference between the two actors, as that can work in other movies. Uh, like, for example, uh, nobody complained when Sam Neill, who was in his 50s and Laura Dern's 20s, were paired together in Jurassic Park. They were a great duo with seeds of romance sprinkled at them, and nobody complained about that because they had great chemistry together. And yes, Harrison Ford and Anne Hesch have good chemistry on the surface, and I like seeing them you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, but I just could not buy them falling in love for some reason. I think it's because the characters were just so different personally 
that to me it makes no sense why they're paired together. And even when they have their first kiss in the third act of the movie, it just came out of left field and random that it just came off as forced and unnecessary. So that aspect of the movie turned me off fast. That aspect overall I felt like hurt the movie. I felt like Anne Hesh had better chemistry with David Schwimmer than with Harrison Ford, especially buying them as a couple, but that's just me personally. This is a movie that's very frustrating because uh, as an adventure film, the film falls short because there's no sense of danger or stakes. The film kind of works the comedy as I did laugh a couple times at some of the situational gags, especially with Anne Hesh being out of her league on this island and Harrison Ford having to show her the ropes and stuff. There's actually some fun banter there. David Schwimmer, likewise, his subplot, there's a couple funny moments with it. So the comedy stuff isn't bad. There's watchable stuff in it. But the, to me, the movie comes off as mediocre and uninspiring at the end of the day because the adventure stuff doesn't work. And when they force a romance between the two leads, that falls apart as well. And at the end of the day, I would say this is one of Ivan Reitman's more forgettable entries. I get that this movie has fans. I respect that people like Dave do highly enjoy this film. But for me personally, I didn't get much out of the movie. I like the setup, but the payoff does not work for me at all. And because of this, I'm not a fan of Six Days, Seven Nights. And it's one of the weaker entries in Ivan Reitman's filmography. Though I do think it's a step up from other duds in his filmography like Cannibal Girls and Junior. So at least there's that. At the end of the day, I'll be giving Six Days, Seven Nights a two and a half out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 47 out of 100. So that wraps up my reviews of both Father's Day and Six Days, Seven Nights. I hope you enjoyed this double bill review as part of my Ivan Reitman director project. And I'll leave a link in the, in the description below where you can check out my Ivan Reitman director playlist featuring all the past reviews that I've covered in this director project so far. You can check out some of my past reviews, including reviews of movies like Dave, Junior, Meatballs and Stripes, and I've done some live stream collabs on this series as well, including collabs with Q reviews on the two Ghostbusters films and collabs with Rashad G reviews on Kindergarten Cop and Twins. I got more Ivan Reitman reviews to come in the future, so be on the lookout for more Ivan Reitman videos coming your way. Join me next time in this director project where I'll be tackling Ivan Reitman's next two films going forward, which are Evolution from 2001 and My Super Ex-Girlfriend from 2006. Be on the lookout for that video coming to the channel real soon. And if you've seen both Father's Day and Six Days, Seven Nights. What are your thoughts on these two movies? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Were you mixed on them? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. This is your first video besides movie reviews. I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!